Hi everyone, I'm going to read you a few chapters from my favourite children's book, Roald Dahl's The Twins. Hairy faces. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big of a job as when I wash on our hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week, like us, on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hair dryer? Do they rub her hair tonic in to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you step out onto the street, maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr Twit. Mr. Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes, his nose, was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr. Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither of these things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit and now at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy face men. It grew in spikes that stuck out like straight, like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit wash this bristly nail brushy face of his? The answer is never, not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary, unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough and there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy faced man cannot do that. We can also, if we're careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not the hairy faced men. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it onto his hairs. Ooh, have a look for that. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there was always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or his sleeve while he was eating. But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. Yeah, oh, I know, right? Blah. If you looked closer still, hold your load noses, ladies and gentlemen, if you peered deep into the moustachey bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail 
of a tinned sardine. Ugh. Because of all this, Mr. Twit never went really hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Please come back um, tomorrow and we will be reading the next few chapters of the book.